Well, welcome, church, to this auspicious day. <laughs> we have three birthday girls in the congregation today. Miss Glenda, we are celebrating again her 36th birthday. We're, <laughs> we're getting pretty good at it. We've done it a few times. Then Miss Pat Pope, yay. And then Eunice, is she in here or is she chasing children around? Oh, and Wynn Scott, too. Okay. Wow, four. I told Glenda, I said, it's amazing what goes on at New Year's Eve parties. <laughs> and maybe the week after. Okay. The other thing, of course, uh, even amongst this celebration, we've got to be mindful that tomorrow is the, another anniversary for September 11th. And as I shared with the first service, you know, I worked Gitmo for a while, the world's most exclusive gated community. And part of that working there was whenever it looked like there was going to be part of the trial process, the families and survivors of 9-11 would come down and watch the proceedings. So it was my job to kind of give them some cushion because it is really hard to be in the room looking at the person who killed your loved one. And especially when they're misbehaving and doing other things. So anyhow, I got to know a lot of the family and survivors of 9-11. And, and, you know, that was 2018 when I was there. So that was 17 years after the fact. And it was like it was yesterday for them. Because, of course, they live it all the time. Of course, we don't need to be reminded of that in New Valley, right? But anyhow, tomorrow, be mindful, be in prayer for the folks that are still living 9-11 every day. Um, and of course, pray for rain. Let's see, are there other announcements we need to make? I see a hand here, so does that mean the lemonade? Which, Grandma, what are you doing? Is it about photograph, is the, the church directory? Yep, we are that close to our new directory. We want everybody in there, yes. And not just because you're good looking, but partly because the, you know, the pastor, people say, you have such a great memory. Uh, yeah, except for names and faces. So <laughs> anyhow, we want you in the directory, so please sign up. And that's just around the corner for us. Anything else we need to s announce? Okay. Let's go to the Lord then in prayer. Lord, we come to you in front of you, seeking you, Lord. We've come to worship you. We've come to lift the cares of earth to heaven. Particularly, we lift up our need for rain in our land. Please send rain, Lord. Have mercy on us. Lord, we lift up those that are still, well, whose lives were forever changed. 9-11. Comfort them, Lord. We do pray that this process will finally come to closure so that they can have closure, Lord. But comfort them, Lord. Be with them. Lord, we celebrate these birthdays and we celebrate our church family with you today. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us each other to be angels one to another, to celebrate joys, to help carry burdens, to worship together, to be on earth as it will be one day in heaven for us as we gather around your throne. We gather with that spirit, Lord, to worship you. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Let us also keep Paolo in prayer. He, his car broke down this morning on his way in from San Antonio, so he's fine. He just wasn't able to make it. So, let us stand as we sing our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
And now let us affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated. Would the ushers please come forward? Listen to your sister. Let us pray. Lord, with joy, with love, with faith, we give these gifts to you. We do not do it out of compulsion. We do it because, Lord, we love you and we trust you. We know that we can give to you and it doesn't put lack into our life or our finances. So, Lord, receive these gifts. May they go from this house to accomplish that for which you purpose them. And may it bring you glory, Lord. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.
may be seated. And will the young disciples come down? Everybody have some lemonade? That was really good. Yes. That's a that's a wonderful way to, to get ready to support that um, precious girl, Abigail, that you all support with the money from the lemonade. Does she, where does she live? Mexico. Mexico, yes. So that's wonderful. I wish she could see all your love. Well, this morning we are going to talk about prayer. Who has a thought about prayer? Who can tell me? Yes, sir. What is prayer? Like you talk to God. There it is, right there. That's exactly what I had put down on my thoughts. I said that prayer is talking, and it's also listening with God. If you're like me, you have lots of things to say, and sometimes we talk, 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 and that, that's a good thing. And God wants to hear us talk, but he also wants us to listen. So, like you said, prayer is talking to God and listening with him. Now, sometimes people think if we're going to pray, we need to say a prayer that sounds really fancy with a lot of big words. Do you think we need to say prayers like that? No, that's, that's right. Think about it this way. When you talk with your dad, do you use words that sound really fancy when you're talking with your dad? Addie says she does. <laughs> My, <laughs> so that's good if she knows some good fancy words. That's good, but... Usually, when we're talking to our dads, we don't use fancy words. We just, we just talk. We just talk. And God is our heavenly father. He's our heavenly dad. Had you ever thought about that? We have our dad on earth, our father here on earth, but we have our heavenly father. And so, when we pray, we just say what's in our hearts. We share with him. And we thank him for always loving us. Do we often say thank you when we pray? Yes. We thank him for always loving us, taking care of us. Do we tell God we love him when we pray? Yes, we do. And we pray for other people. We pray if we're happy about something that's happening with other people. Or we may pray for other people that really especially need help and care. And guess what? Sometimes we ask God's questions when we pray. Do you know the answers about everything? Does it, do any of you all know the answers about everything? No, me either. And so we can ask God those questions when we pray. Now think about this. Our prayers to God can be out loud using our voice. Is that what we usually hear? Yes, right. We hear prayers out loud using our voice. But sometimes prayers can be silent prayers. They just come from our heart. If you are praying in your heart, does God hear that? Yes, he does. He does. And as we said, a very special, important part of prayer is listening to God. And when we listen, he does speak to our hearts. So prayer is such a wonderful part of our life every day, all through our day, talking and listening with God. So now let's pray together, and if you will, please repeat after me. 
Father God, thank you for loving us. We love you and praise you. Thank you for always hearing our prayers. Please help us to listen to you in prayer as you speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. <clears throat> Will you please stand for the reading of God's word? <clears throat> Our first scripture is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 through 11. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so it is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. And now from Matthew 26, 36 through 41. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to, to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. If it please. This morning's message, the vertical before the horizontal. You may have noticed these... What were they? Lavender <laughs> cards. <laughs> yes, aren't you? I, I only need a little training. To me, this is a purple thing, you know, but. I know I've said already to you here in this sermon that September to me is the start of the school year. Regardless of now that school begins in August, mentally, September. And. For those of you who are in education, you know that when the school year starts, sometimes you got to go back to last year. You got to go, you got to, what is it, back to the future or whatever. You got to do some refresher training. I'm in the military and kind of like my mindset here is now that it's September, it means we have to go back and retrain all the yearly training that the government says that we got to do EEO training and we have to do basically how not to let the Chinese steal all our secrets and these yearly refresher trainings that just drive you crazy, suicide prevention and, and stuff like that. So I'm a person who says there is a need for refresher training. At one point, you guys joined a church and then it may have been this church, it may have been another church, but then when you joined this church, you even brought that promise, that pledge here and even under global, you pledge to support this church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service. So we start with the vertical before we deal with the horizontal. The vertical is prayers. Imagine a church whose people do not pray. 
I certainly don't want to imagine that church. Because you know who runs that church if it's people don't pray? The good idea fairy. Is there anybody else who hates the good idea fairy? You know, the, the, the meetings that you go to, they say, you know what we ought to do? That's the spirit of the good idea fairy speaking right there. You know what we ought to do? Especially if you haven't prayed about it. And then you'll do all kinds of crazy stuff. And churches do crazy stuff. And you know, we have a lot of help in doing crazy stuff. I've never met a person, whether they went to church or not, who wasn't an expert on what every church ought to be doing. I'm going to be silent for a minute while that sinks in. You guys, you must have met that expert too. They're constantly saying, you know what your church needs to do? You know what Uvalde needs and your church needs to do that for Uvalde? They may accidentally get it right. But the only way to get it 100% right is for the church to be praying. I do kind of have a Catholic background, you may have noticed. I know many people think I'm a Catholic priest as I wander around town. Till they see me holding hands with Glenda and they say, oh, well, the Catholics must have loosened something up. <laughs> a couple of things I might add. <laughs> but, and where I was going with that is, I'm not against heaping some guilt on you. Right? You know, the Catholics are known for guilt. My mom's side of the family is both Pentecostal and Catholic. What an interesting mix. When you think about the, this pledge to support a church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, you should ask yourself, what is the church? The church is Christ's bride. Christ is coming back not for individuals. He is coming back for his bride, the church. In a sense, when you promise to the church, those are marriage vows because you are becoming the the bride, the very person that Christ is coming for. He's coming for his bride. And you have promised in your marriage vows to support the bride with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service. But the prayers are the part, not only just because they come first in these vows, but they come first with intention. As the Methodists looked and said, okay, what do we need our people to pledge to do. You notice it isn't money first. It begins with this conversation with God, as we heard to the children's, to the young disciples. A church that isn't praying is a church that isn't listening. We all have our lists. <laughs> I love Tony in the, at the 9 a.m. service. She said, one of the drawbacks of letting know, people know that you pray is they say, oh, well, then pray for this and pray for that. And after a while, your list becomes so long that actually you don't have time to have a job. You don't even have a time to be retired. And I, 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 there may be a retiree behind me or two. <laughs> you wonder how you ever did your job. Thankfully, Tony gave a little class on that. I'm not going to give a a class on that aspect of praying, but we did from uh, here in Young Disciples that part of praying too is listening. In Isaiah 55, God reminded the prophet that my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts, says the Lord. If we're not praying, we're going to be operating in our thoughts, in a sense, in our flesh. And as Jesus mentions to Peter and James and John, he says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. If we want to be a weak church, we just stay in the flesh. But as we pray, and it's not easy, as James, John, and Peter showed, when asked by their Lord to pray, they weren't faithful. They went to sleep. They let it go. 
Sometimes when we realize, oh, I should pray more. You know when I'm going to start praying? When I retire. Or when some, what I call, destination disease. When I finally get to this point in my life, that's the destination, then I'm going to make time. I'm going to start a habit of prayer. If you read as a devotional, uh, Oswald Chambers, My Utmost for His Highest, on September the 10th, a lot of people's birthday, (laughs) um, he said, and, and this, you know, it resonates with me as a military person, you don't make your bullets when you're in the trenches. You better have made your bullets before you get to the trenches. If we think we're going to pray when the crisis hits, and this was from the devotional, if you don't already have it as a habit, it won't be there when you need it. Let's look at Jesus' example in Matthew 26. He has finally reached crunch time. This is the reason that he came to planet Earth. And even he, even he, I say that because sometimes people say, well, I don't need to pray. God knows what I need. Why pray? Uh, You don't think God knew? (laughs) You know, the father didn't know what his son needed, but the son went into the garden and he didn't try to pray by himself. He got a prayer team together. Of course, they let him down, but at least he invited them out. But he prayed. But as we know from reading the Gospels, This is because he had a habit of prayer long before he got to Gethsemane. The Bible again and again says, you know, and and some of the, the best times where he could have hung out with the crowd more, it says he left the crowd and he went off to pray. Sometimes we say, I can't pray, I'm too busy, I got too much going on. What did Jesus do in those instances? He told the crowd, hang on, gotta pray. And he went out and he got alone and he prayed. And because he made that a habit, when he got to the Garden of Gethsemane, he knew to pray. And he was able to pray. And he didn't fail when he prayed. He didn't sleep when he prayed because he had a habit and he prayed. So if Jesus prayed, if it was his habit, we need it to be our habit. Some folks think that God quit speaking with the last page of Revelation, the book of Revelation, that he no longer speaks. There's a very famous preacher who says, if you want to hear the word of God, go read the Bible. And I will say, that is true. The Bible is the word of God, and when you read it, you can go to the bank if it's in there. Boom. And sometimes... You might even take a word for someone who's come to you, or you might even be ministering to yourself. And part of it is when you see that word and you know that verse of the Bible, let me give you an example. One of the ones that really, as a pastor, I frequently have to speak into other people's lives comes from the book of Joel. And it is, well, so let me set the scenario first. Someone will come to me and they'll regret 20 years of their life lost to alcoholism or some other pornography or or something that has just robbed them of something that they realize God would have had them have all these years except Satan stole them through whatever this was. And then they look at the calendar and they're not like Glenda, able to constantly be 36. They look at the calendar and they realize, I don't think I have very many years left, Pastor. And oh, I wasted all these years, and they're sad, and they, all, they, all they can see is the loss. And that's when I speak the words of Joel into their life. That's why it's in there. And I said, God restores the years that the locusts have eaten. You may not, <laughs> you may think you only have 20 years on the clock. Who knows what God says you have on the clock? But even in the time you you say, no, I'm old now. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't run like I used to. What does God say? Certainly one of the things he says, I restore the years that the locusts have eaten. Whatever has been stolen from you, God can restore it. Oh, Lord, 
Pastor, how do I know that can come to be? And then Isaiah 55, what we heard today. My word doesn't come out of my mouth. Just the same way that rain doesn't fall from the sky unless it brings forth life on earth. My word doesn't come out of my mouth unless, this is God speaking, unless it brings forth that for which I purpose. It never returns to me empty. He spoke this word in Joel. He had me speak it to you now. It will not return empty by the prophet Isaiah. That's all good. But now how do we pull something else out of that? Well, particularly as we talk about a church praying, God still, I, I maintain God still speaks to the church, through the prophets, through others. There's individuals in this church that God will give a word to. And that word will not return void. It will accomplish that for which it was purposed. But imagine if we never pick up the phone to get that word. If we never hear that word because we never prayed. We never got in our prayer closet. God's word, God is faithful to his word. Are we faithful to hear it? Are we faithful to seek it? Are we faithful to say, Lord, what would you have us do, me do, here in the church, in Uvalde, maybe even in the world? You know, part, of, part of the legacy of Uvalde is we've had a person at one time one heartbeat away from being the president of the United States from Uvalde. Yeehaw! Oh, wait, okay. <laughs> so there are is no insignificant place, no insignificant church, because our God is the God of the least of these, right? And somebody who receives a word in this church, in their prayer closet, could be one heartbeat away, could be that president. But in order for God's word to bear the fruit that he purposed in that life, they've got to hear it. But he says, if I speak it out, it will not return void. How could we not want to hear something that powerful? So church, you took your vows. You joined the church. You might have taken the vows at another church, but you brought them here, and when you joined this church, I asked you or some pastor asked you to recommit, to renew your marriage vows. And so church, you need to pray. Vertical first. We'll worry about the horizontal after that. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, thank you that you still speak and that you say you are the one who gives surety to that word. You said it will not return void. It will accomplish that for which you purposed it. May we as your people seek that word as we read your word, live that word, and listen for your word to the glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Would you stand as you are able as we sing?
You may be seated. Sometimes I get too clever for myself. Your question's going to be, what do we do with this now? From in subsequent weeks, if you can actually fill it out next week, you can put it in the collection plate as it goes by. But for today, if you're an overachiever and you're not going to wait four weeks to hear me teach on these, you can leave them on the little table that's just outside the sanctuary. I forget to say that. Okay. And the other thing before the benediction... We're having a no-host blizzard party at Dairy Queen for the birthdays today. Um, so if you want to come have a blizzard with Glenda and the girls, uh, do come. That's where we're going next after we don't get enough sugar here. Okay. Now the benediction. <laughs> Lord, you are so faithful. How could we not seek you in all things? But we do, or we will. You promise to forgive us. You promised to be our strength. You promised to accomplish those things for which you purposed. May we know we leave your house with purpose because we have fed on your word and we will feed on your word in the week that is ahead to the glory of our Savior. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit to the glory of the Father, in whose mighty name we pray, amen.